coming soon. From the makers of the award-winning Route 66 and American Odyssey. And starring Martin Milner. Route 66, Return to America. Back in 1960, I starred in the CBS television series Route 66. As Todd and Buzz, we traveled all over the country. It was great adventure, but that was over 30 years ago. More than 30 years since the hit TV show Route 66, Martin Milner returns to the road that he helped make famous. Ride with Milner as he revisits the historic 2,400-mile route across America's heartland from Chicago to L.A. It's a journey that profiles the people of the road like no film before it. And get your kicks on Route 66. That's the main part I remember on that side. It really has helped me stay in business. People look for the bluebird. I've given up uh, trying to convert people, but I am uh, confident that we will come around as a species eventually. I know how to tell a good story. We use double yolk eggs. In more than 40 interviews, you'll meet up close roadside Americans of every kind. Unique characters ranging from the offbeat to the endearing to the unforgettable. Interpol takes orders from me, British intelligence, everybody. It's been a long time since Route 66 was a major highway. But in many ways, America is still the same. It's just a little harder to find, hidden away in quiet corners and forgotten stretches of two-lane highway. A journey there will change you forever. A journey there can't be matched. I hope I see you on the road. Now available on home video. Get your kicks on Route 66. Never before has a video done so much to rekindle America's love for the old highway. Pacific Communications presents the award-winning documentary, Route 66, An American Odyssey. You'll journey in time through the history of America's most beloved highway, from its construction in the 1920s to the heyday of the 50s and 60s. Route 66, an American Odyssey, masterfully tells the story of America's Main Street, capturing the spirit of the road at every turn. Critically acclaimed at film festivals and by countless reviewers, this video is the classic history of the Mother Road. Motor Trend raves, glorious, highly and heartily recommended. Albuquerque Monthly says, stunning cinematography. Remember Magazine calls it a treasure. And Route 66 Magazine proclaims it the ultimate tribute to the Mother Road. Route 66, an American Odyssey. Just $19.95 plus $4 shipping and handling. Order now and receive the full color collector's poster free. Call toll free 1-800-368-3748. It's Americana at its best, a great gift. Call now 1-800-368-3748. It was the road that meant going somewhere. Get your kicks on Route 66. The highway of choice for vacationing Americans. The way to Disneyland and the Grand Canyon and Las Vegas. They called it the Main Street of America, and it became an American legend. But what many don't know is that Route 66 is not just a memory. 
Today, more than 85% of the road is still drivable. Granted, it's not the quickest way from Chicago to LA, but it's the only way to see the real America, the small towns, the scenic west, the roadside kitsch. A drive down Route 66 today is the closest thing there ever was to time travel. Many of the old motor courts and diners are still open, some with the original proprietors. In other places, the road has remained frozen in time, and exploring and wandering through these ghost towns is also a part of the adventure. If you're an older traveler, Route 66 will bring back memories. If you're a younger traveler, Route 66 promises kicks like you won't find on the turnpikes and interstates. Either way, high adventure awaits, and this program was designed to help you find it. You'll take a state-by-state -state video tour of what there is to see and do on 66, get travel tips from experts, and be introduced to essential resources for planning a trip on 66. The final segment of this video is a directory of Route 66 associations and other helpful contacts, including phone numbers and addresses. Watch and then get your own kicks on Route 66. Coming up, you'll see a quick tour of the entire road from Chicago to LA. Remember, if we were to show you everything on Route 66, you'd be watching this video all day. So we've included just a brief sample of all that you'll find along the historic highway. Chicago is a great American city and a fitting start to the Great American Road. Route 66 officially began at the corner of Jackson and Michigan Avenue near the shores of Lake Michigan. Today, Jackson has been converted into a one-way going east. Therefore, Adams Street is the westbound Highway 66 out of the city. Not far out of Chicago, in Willowbrook, you'll find a longtime favorite of locals and travelers, Del Rey's Chicken Basket. In Wilmington, visit the Launching Pad Drive-In, known for its giant spaceman statue. Dwight has two road businesses dating back to the 1930s, the Marathon Oil Station and the Carefree Motel. Look for the remnants of an old 1930s Sinclair gas station in Odell. Next is Pontiac with its beautiful town square and on its outskirts, the Log Cabin Restaurant, which has survived many reroutings of Route 66, thanks in part to the regular patronage of local farmers. Next stop, Funk's Grove, a small town nestled among maple trees where the Funk family began making syrup in 1925. And you could still buy it in season. The Dixie Truckers home in McLean lays claim to being the first truck stop in America and houses the Illinois Route 66 Hall of Fame and Museum. Route 66 continues southwest through Atlanta and its unique public library building. With the skyscrapers of Chicago behind us, towering grain elevators line the road through rural farmlands. Next is Broadwell, which was home to the famous but now closed Pig Hip Restaurant, owned by Illinois Hall of Famers Ernie and Francis Edwards. Springfield is the land of Lincoln, where you can visit his tomb and boyhood home, and then have lunch at the Cozy Dog, run by Buzz Waldmeyer, whose father, Ed Waldmeyer, invented the corn dog. In Raymond, there's the Our Lady of the Highway Shrine, a place of devotion for all travelers. Litchfield is home to the Ariston Cafe, the best Greek restaurant on Route 66. Mount Olive, near the border with Missouri, was home to Soulsby's famous Shell service station, which filled the gas tanks of Route 66 travelers for over 60 years, but is now closed. Route 66 left Illinois and headed into St. Louis on the Chain of Rocks Bridge. It closed in the 1980s, but you can still walk out onto it, look over the mighty Mississippi, and maybe hear echoes of the bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic it once carried.
Route 66 angles southwest through the Show Me State, beginning in St. Louis. Ted Drew's Frozen Custard is a famous Route 66 stop, selling concretes, milkshakes so thick you can hold them upside down. Stanton boasts two great roadside tourist attractions, luring travelers with huge signs. The unparalleled Merrimack Caverns with its stalagmites and stalactites. And don't forget the Jesse James Wax Museum, where you'll hear compelling evidence for a conspiracy theory regarding the death of the notorious villain. Passing through Sullivan, look for the Shamrock Motel buildings, a fine example of some of the old motor court architecture that survives to this day. In Cuba, spend a night at the charming Wagon Wheel Motel. Their slogan? Fall asleep at our wheel, not yours. St. James is wine country, where for decades, Italian-American vineyard owners have sold grapes and wine along the highway's edges. The car lot at Route 66 Motors in Rolla is stocked with vintage autos and a wide selection of automobilia collectibles. And just up the road is the historic Mule Trading Post. Continuing west, you'll pass through Hooker Cut, once one of the deepest rock cuts in the country and a rare stretch of divided highway on 66. You'll then pass over the Big Piney River on a 1923 iron bridge at Devil's Elbow. Springfield, the queen city of the Ozarks. 66 through the city takes you by the Shrine Mosque, a true architectural curiosity. At Halltown and continuing west, you'll see an increasing number of abandoned gas stations, victims of the interstate freeway, which diverted travelers away from these small roadside towns. Next is Carthage, site of an important Civil War battle and a magnificent town square. Consider spending a night at Boots Motel. The 66 drive-in is on the way to Joplin and was undergoing restoration at the time of filming. Joplin, which got a mention in the famous Get Your Kicks on Route 66, is the final stop before heading into Kansas. Route 66 passes through Kansas for 13.2 miles, starting in Galena, named for the town's lead mines. The Depot Museum is an incredible array of mining artifacts and oddities. At Riverton, you'll find Eisler Brothers Grocery Store. Not exactly a Costco or a Walmart, but more than likely, they'll have what you're looking for. Eisler Brothers is the headquarters of the Kansas Historic Route 66 Association. Leaving Riverton, you'll cross one of the few remaining Rainbow Marsh arch bridges. Finally, 66 passes through downtown Baxter Springs, the proud cow town of Kansas. <music> Oklahoma is considered the heart of Route 66. It all begins in Quapaw and then Commerce, birthplace of the Commerce Comet, Mickey Mantle. Through Miami, you'll pass the historic Coleman Theater, once a venue for Will Rogers. Near Foyle, a slight detour will take you to the world's largest totem poles, constructed by the Indian Ed Galloway. Claremore is the birthplace and burial site of Will Rogers. At the Will Rogers Memorial, you can tour a museum dedicated to the actor and cowboy. Passing through Catoosa, you'll notice the recently restored Blue Whale Amusement Park, and across the street, Arrowwoods, a great example of the old-style Indian trading post. Tulsa Town, the world oil capital, with the Art Deco skyline that the oil money built. Route 66 is 11th Street through Tulsa, and passes by the Metro Diner, where you can eat in the true 50s style. A great sleep is the Lincoln Motel in Chandler, original tourist cabins with well-manicured lawns and clean rooms. Continuing west, you'll pass by Arcadia with its curious round barn, 
which was built to withstand heavy winds. Stroud shows pride in its Route 66 heritage, and the Rock Cafe is still serving up great barbecue. From here, the road angles into Oklahoma City, the state capital, and home to the Cowboy Hall of Fame. Near Yukon, you'll cross the South Canadian River over a wonderful yellow bridge with spans that just keep going and going, 38 in all. At El Reno, there's the Big 8 Motel, famous for its role in the movie Rain Man. Dustin Hoffman and Tom Cruise took room 117. In Hydro, you can visit Lucille Hammond's gas station, one of the oldest gas stations on the road. Be sure to visit the premier Route 66 Museum in Clinton. It's a walk through history of the road. And across the street, you can stay in the room where the king once slept while on tour in the 60s. And don't forget Pop Hicks Restaurant. Open 24 hours since 1936. The friendly service, hearty menu, and more than fair prices will all take you back to the 50s. The road then passes through Elk City, Sayre, and Eric before hitting the border town, Texola, a foreshadowing of what lies just west. Route 66 crosses the Texas Panhandle for about 180 miles. Shamrock, Texas is a city of Irish heritage and site of the Art Deco You Drop In. In McLean, visit the Devil's Rope Museum, a tribute to barbed wire. The same building also houses the Texas Route 66 Museum. On the edge of town, look for a vintage Phillips 66 station. Passing by Groom, you'll see more abandoned motels and the leaning water tower, allegedly built that way to draw curious tourists into town. Heading into Amarillo, you'll have seen countless signs advertising the free 72-ounce steak. But there's a catch. It's only free if you can eat the whole steak and trimmings in under an hour. On the west edge of town is one of the most picturesque stops along the road, Cadillac Ranch. 10 classic Cadillacs stuck nose first in the ground. Vega marks the halfway point and is home to George and Melba Rook's Route 66 Antiques. Glen Rio sits on the border of Texas and New Mexico, a ghost town despite its four lanes of Route 66. Route 66 crosses New Mexico for 501 miles, more than any other state. Just beyond the border is Tucumcari, city of 2,000 motel rooms, and one of the last of the true curio shops, TP Curios. West of Tucumcari is some of the most scenic stretches of old 66. The earliest alignment of Route 66 veered north to Santa Fe, the capital of New Mexico and oldest city in America. From Santa Fe, it headed southwest to Duke City, Albuquerque where Route 66 is the neon-drenched Central Avenue. Stop for a cheeseburger and malt at the 66 Diner. Leaving Albuquerque, you'll climb Nine Mile Hill, so named for the distance from the crest to downtown. Continuing west, you'll cross an old bridge at Rio Puerco. Then weave through Laguna with its scenic mesas. You'll drive through Budville, then Cubero, where Ernest Hemingway came to work on the old man in the sea. Grants was once a boom town due to uranium mining. Check out the mining museum and eat where the miners once ate. Next stop is Gallup, where the motels take on a lodge motif. The best of them all is El Rancho, where many movie stars stayed while making westerns. Heading into Arizona, Route 66 crosses the Painted Desert and Petrified Forest National Parks. Just beyond the park is Holbrook, where you can stay at the Wigwam Motel. Continuing west, you'll see dozens of signs for the Jackrabbit Trading Post, where you can find all the souvenirs you ever wanted. While the Jackrabbit thrives, 
The ruins of Two Guns, an old tourist stop, are remarkably eerie. And don't forget Winona, which is right before Flagstaff, a town with many surviving motels and cafes from Route 66's heyday. Almost the entire downtown of Williams is listed on the National Historic Register. And from here, you can take a ride on a vintage steam train to the south rim of the Grand Canyon. Seligman is considered by many the heart of the Route 66 revival. It's the site of prankster Juan Delgadillo's incomparable snow-capped drive-in. And just down the street is his brother Angel's barber shop. From here, Route 66 enjoys an uninterrupted run to the border. It passes through a number of small towns, Peach Springs, Truxton and its Frontier Cafe, and Hackberry, home to Bob Waldmeyer and his international bioregional Route 66 foundation. Kingman is home to the historic Route 66 Association of Arizona. The Hotel Beale and other stalwarts line Route 66 through town. Next, you'll climb Sit Greaves Pass on the way to Oatman, a mining ghost town with such character, it's been revived as a tourist town. From Oatman, the road descends to Topak on the Colorado River, which marks the border. Needles welcomes you to California. Unless you want to cross the desert by night, sleep here at the Old Trails Inn. Otherwise, venture out into the Mojave through towns like Essex and Amboy, home to Roy's Motel. Next, you'll pass through Baghdad, Ludlow, and Newbury Springs, site of the Baghdad Cafe, which starred in a cult classic film by the same name. Barstow, the great way station for the Santa Fe Railway, has an original motel built completely from railroad ties. In Victorville, check out the California Route 66 Museum. You'll next be headed down Cajon Pass into the LA Basin. By San Bernardino, you'll be in Southern California, but there's still plenty of Route 66 amidst it all, like the TP Motels, and then the Route 66 Territorial Museum in Rancho Cucamonga. In Azusa, you can relive the good old days at the drive-in, still showing movies in season. At Pasadena, you'll travel a ways on the Rose Parade route, then onto the famous Arched Bridge and into downtown Los Angeles. From here, you'll head west on Sunset Boulevard to Santa Monica Boulevard and Hollywood. For one last culinary tip, try Barney's Beanery, which boasts LA's second best chili. Santa Monica Boulevard leads right to the Pacific Coast at Santa Monica Pier, where a plaque marks the end of the Will Rogers Highway. So how can you actually drive Route 66? Well, today Route 66 has many names and faces, meaning that sometimes it's a business route through town. Sometimes it's a frontage road next to the freeway. Sometimes it's a state highway. And sometimes it's a closed road. Beginning in 1956, Route 66 from Chicago to LA was slowly replaced by interstates 55, 44, 40, 15, and 10. In the process, Route 66 was decertified and renamed. And so following the original Route 66 may not be as easy as you might imagine. Conventional maps from Rand McNally or AAA don't show it, but it can be found. First of all, each state has now marked historic Route 66 with a uniformly designed distinct highway shield. The brown color of these signs is symbolic for a historic road or trail. If you keep your eyes peeled for these signs, you can follow Route 66 most of the way across the country. But at some junctures, there are no signs in sight, and you won't know whether to jog left or right. That's why the most essential thing to your trip will be a good Route 66 map that actually shows you which streets comprised the original route and where to turn so that you stay on Route 66. A lot of the roads aren't identified as Route 66. They have uh, new state highway numbers, or they have no signage or number at all. 
and without some kind of guide beforehand, you're in a position to just guesswork. And you might end up all your time backtracking down the wrong service road or dead end road, or even getting off on some sandy little dirt road and getting stuck, which has happened. Our crews have traveled the road extensively and recommend the following maps. A guidebook to Route 66 by Bob Moore and Patrick Growls has detailed directions for following the road with documentation to the tenth of a mile. Key landmarks are highlighted with a picture and historical information. When it comes to accuracy and clarity, the Here It Is Route 66 map series by Jim Ross and Jerry McLanahan is tops. Each state is a separate fold-out map. You can buy a single state, or the complete set of all eight states to get you from Chicago to LA. In addition, there are several excellent regional resources that you can get from the state associations. The Illinois Historic Route 66 Association publishes a series of brochures to guide travelers, including recommendations on good eats and sleeps. There's a Missouri-Kansas Route 66 map that is excellent. Jim Ross's very detailed Oklahoma Cruiser's Companion is the best map for Oklahoma Route 66. The Albuquerque Chamber of Commerce publishes a brochure highlighting all the historic motels, diners, and neon signs along Central Avenue, which is Route 66 through downtown. Vivian Davies' guidebook is a great resource for navigating California Route 66. The Route 66 West Directory, while not a map, is a well-organized listing of all Route 66 restaurants, motels, campgrounds, and museums from Oklahoma to California. It includes phone numbers and addresses for most points of interest and a listing of upcoming events in Route 66 cities. If all else fails, ask somebody, especially in small towns. People are proud of Route 66, and the friendly locals can usually point the way. So never be afraid to inquire, where's 66? Also, realize that Route 66 actually was realigned several times over the years. And so while driving on one version of the route, you may discover an earlier alignment not too far away. Look for railroad tracks. The original alignments parallel the Santa Fe Railroad path across most of the West. Also, watch for abandoned roads made of Portland concrete with seams. This is how the early alignments were paved. When the freeway was built, they often built right next to it or on top of Route 66, since it often followed the path of least resistance across natural barriers of the land. So often, the old alignment parallels the interstate. Above ground telephone lines, like railroad tracks, are often a clue to where the original alignment might lie. It's good to have a navigator too that can be reading the points of interest information and uh, kind of acting as a guide to make sure you don't miss a turn or uh, bypass something that, uh, that you want to be sure and see. Besides knowing where to turn right and jog left, you may want to enrich your experience with some other traveling resources. Route 66 itinerant artist Bob Waldmeyer has produced a map that is a true work of art. He calls it a bioregionally flavored tour of 66. For nature lovers, this is the map. It's replete with natural history, information on climates, bioregions, and the wildlife, and all the landmarks along the Mother Road. So on the old roads, uh, it's a much more intimate experience as far as uh, the land that you're passing through goes. But I love to see nature reclaiming abandoned roadways. If you want to be a well-studied traveler, there are two books which provide great historical background and commentary. Route 66, The Mother Road by Michael Wallace is credited by many with sparking the current revival of interest in Route 66. It's a definitive history and guided tour of the road, including profiles of the people you might meet along the way, and it's packed with brilliant color photography. Searching for 66 by Tom Teague is the author's account of a modern day journey down the highway with illustrations by artist Bob Waldmeyer. Route 66 Magazine, an international quarterly dedicated to the highway, is also a good resource as its stories highlight attractions and uncover forgotten places along the road. You can have the route delivered to your door with a subscription, and back issues are available as well. The magazine's office also sells many of the other maps and resources mentioned in this video. In the fiction arena, Route 66 stars in two American classics. Jack Kerouac's On the Road is a tribute to the American road trip, and John Steinbeck Grapes of Wrath is the story of the Jode family's Dust Bowl-era trip to California via Route 66. 
As you make your own trek across the desert, you'll find yourself imagining what it must have been like for the Dust Bowl migrants headed west. You may even spot some relics of the era along the road's edges. Another book we recommend is Jack Rittenhouse's A Guidebook to Highway 66, published in 1946. As a reference or navigational aid, it's sorely outdated. But as you drive, it's fun to read and compare notes with his descriptions of the scenery and towns from over 50 years ago. Who knows, some of his dining recommendations may hold true. Knowing some of the history and which way to turn is important. But the most crucial thing to enjoy your trip on Route 66 will be to take your time. Meet the folks along the way. Don't be in a hurry. The best part about Route 66 is the surprises, the people you're going to meet along the way. You meet people from other countries. You meet people that have lived on Route 66 all their lives and never been away. Map your route and take in long episodes. Take in spoonfuls of the mother road, the way life used to be. Go into a little pie palace and click on the jukebox and get that triple thick chocolate malt or that uh, slice of pie and, and you make it 1955 and make it the best day of your life in 1955. Take some risks. Stop at the strange and unfamiliar places, not the franchise motels and fast food. Sleep in a wigwam. Browse old curio stores for something you didn't know existed. The adventure is in the unknown. The enclosed coupon book offers discounts at many of the historic museums, restaurants, motels, and souvenir shops along the road. These are the businesses that help keep 66 alive, so support them. Route 66 is an adventure no matter what you happen to drive, but you may want to heighten the experience by renting a Corvette or a Harley Davidson. Cruise America is well known for RV rentals, but you can also book a Harley Davidson for your trip down the mother road. Cruise America has several locations across the country. And if you're looking to travel in the style of Buzz and Todd, check out Rent-A-Vet with five locations in the Southwest, including Phoenix and Las Vegas. Some roadies determined to drive every last mile of Route 66 may think it prudent to have a four-wheel drive vehicle. And while it can be helpful, in reality, there are only a few stretches of road that are impassable with a conventional auto. And there are alternate routes available. If you're really ambitious or maybe just crazy, how about pedaling across America? Some of the old alignments make for great mountain biking. There's even a guidebook devoted solely to bicycling on Route 66 with detailed directions and mileage charts. In recent years, many organized tours have developed, and one of them may be right up your alley. The Smithsonian Institute offers guided trips down the Mother Road, hosted by authors Michael and Suzanne Wallace. And Sports and Leisure Travel, based in Sacramento, offers bus tours of the Mother Road. Throughout the year, there are many special events celebrating Route 66, and you may want to plan your vacation accordingly. The Arizona Fun Run is an annual event held the last weekend of April. It's a cruise of the longest remaining uninterrupted stretch of Route 66, from Seligman to Topak. Since the first run in 1988, it's become quite a tradition. Typically, more than 500 vehicles register for the cruise, car show, and street festival. It's organized by the historic Route 66 Association of Arizona, and you can contact them for more information. Like Arizona, Oklahoma has an annual Route 66 cruise and sponsored by the Oklahoma Route 66 Association. If you want to cruise the land of Lincoln, join the Illinois Motor Tour, which is usually in June and alternates directions east or west each year. The Route 66 Rendezvous held in San Bernardino the third weekend in September has become the largest Route 66 themed event. It features a swap meet, street dance, car shows, and cruising. Finally, be aware that the weather can fluctuate from one part of the road to the next. You may face searing desert heat or violent thunderstorms or snow where you may not expect it as the route passes through high elevations in New Mexico and Arizona. Know ahead of time what regional climates you will likely face during the season of your travel. Just if you're traveling 66 or any road, uh, if it's safe, if you're not being tailgated by a, a reckless uh, uh, driver, uh, try to be prepared to stop or slow down or swerve around and allow a creature to pass safely because we're not the only ones traveling the road. Uh, that's all I would add. And of course, stop by here if you get out this way and uh, stop and rest a while.
If you want to order any of the resources pictured in this program, contact Route 66 Magazine or any of the state Route 66 associations. Each of the eight Route 66 states has formed a historic Route 66 association. They're a great resource for maps, books, advice, and information on upcoming events, cruises, and car shows. However, they are nonprofit and staffed by volunteers, so when requesting materials, please include a small contribution. Also, consider becoming a member of one or more state associations. You'll receive a membership certificate and a regular newsletter. Most importantly, you'll be helping them in their mission of preserving historic Route 66.